Hello everybody and welcome to Lauren Loves Color. This is Lauren. I have what I think is a really, really exciting video. I'm at least excited. I hope you're excited. I wanted to go ahead and film my finishing process. Um, I find I've watched a lot of coloring chats before in the past and I love watching people color while I color. Um, but one thing I don't see very often that I wish I saw a little bit more was somebody actually finishing a page, putting the final touches on their page to make it look amazing. I probably enjoy the finishing process more, maybe more than the actual process of coloring the page itself. I love adding the details, the glitter, the metallicness, the backgrounds, everything into the page that make it look so cool. And also I wanted to share some of what I have learned with you. I've been coloring again for about six months now. I've learned a lot from watching other people. And so what I want to do is show some of the techniques that I've learned. Some of them we're going to try and experiment with. And guys, it could go south. This could go real bad real quick and could look a hot mess. But at least you'll learn with me. Um, it won't be so, you know, so feeling like, well, does this actually work and does it not? No one understand that when I want to do a background or I want to do embellishments on a page, I have to keep it real simple. I don't want to do anything that involves a lot of really crazy techniques or is super messy because if you haven't, you will be seeing a video of me in my workspace. And the space that I use to craft and color is the same exact space I use to actually do my day-to-day -day job. So I can't do something that is very, um, that requires a well-ventilated area or requires a lot of, um, um, you know, things that are messy just because I have my work things here. And I just, I'm also just not a messy person in general. I don't like to make kind of a big mess of different things. So what I'm going to show you today is actually a buddy color that I'm doing with Emily. And, um, she is the butterfly hater on, um, Instagram. She's hilarious and wonderful. Um, she also has a YouTube channel called color me impressed. If you have not subscribed to her, you need to go do it right now. She does beautiful, amazing pictures, but they're also very approachable. A lot of the techniques I'm actually going to use in here, I have learned from her. Um, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to kind of show how I'm going to finish the page for my buddy color and to maybe teach you a few kind of just easy, quick, tips and tricks um, and some of the tools that I work with. So let's talk about what I actually do when I embellish, what tools do I use and um, what do I need to have in front of me and accessible. First of all, I'll show you, this is the page that we're going to be working on, um, which is this page here. And I'll talk a little bit about this page here in a minute, but this is the page we're going to be working on. One thing I absolutely must have with me, this is my color charts book. Um, this is where I keep all of my swatches of all of my different markers. You guys will soon learn about why this is important. It's because I reference this for colors of gel pens, um, you know, and markers and things like that, that I'm going to use in here. Let me set this actually aside for a moment. The next thing that I have to have in front of me at the very, very minimum is going to be this little tray here. I got this from the dollar store and it houses a lot of my finishing supplies. These are all of my dual metallic gel pens. They're either Divicle or Pentel. Um, so these house my uh, gel pens here. I also have my budget friendly, just kind of standard glitter gel pens here. These are a combination of the Dollar Tree um, jot gel pens that look like this mixed with the flare gel pens that look like this. So these are kind of solid color glitter gel pens. I also have an entire pack of glitter gel pens from Color It, but I find that this usually meets most of my needs. And then I have some, these are kind of my heavy hitters. These are the um, pens and things that I use most frequently. Um, I have a Posca um, a Posca paint pen I have, which I, this is what I actually use the most is my Uniball Signo white gel pen. This is well loved, well used. I actually am probably getting close to running out on this gel pen. I do have some backups in case we run out today, but this is what I use for highlighting. I have a few different, I have a, a Sharpie a silver metallic um, marker here. Silver is usually what I use the most. And then I have some Jelly Roll pens here. Um, these two are Jelly Roll glaze pens. One is in black and one is clear. Um, these I have grown to love immensely um, over the past, um, kind of over the past month. Um, these are, this is a Jelly Roll Stardust in clear. So you can kind of like, if I don't have a gel pen that maybe matches one of the gel pens that I have, you can add this to anything and it will add glitter right over it. 
This is a um, Jelly Roll Metallic in silver that I use a lot. And then last but not least, this is actually something that Emily taught me about, which this is my colorless blender. I have learned to use this sucker a lot. We will use it today and I will show you how I use this colorless blender to create some different texture effects um, on my pictures. Next to me are also a couple of other important things. move some things around here. This is also kind of a must have for me. Um, this usually sits next to me. These are the rest of my jelly rolls. So I have some additional jelly roll glaze colors. I have a whole bunch of different metallic colors. I have some additional white. Um, these are the 0.8 um, white gel pens. I like the Signa Uni Ball better. So um, these I had first and, and I don't really use these very much. Um, yeah. And then I have in some additional Starbucks, Stardust ones as well. I also have learned to love stickles. I have gelatos in here too. We're not going to use those today. Um, I'm not actually a huge fan of the gelatos thus far, but I have a whole bunch of stickles, which just create just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful effects. And I think we may use some of these today. Um, I was thinking about using this yellow and I may use one of these um, this one, which is kind of almost a bronzy color. Um, I also have a glossy accents, um, which a lot of you guys have heard about these before that can create kind of a wet look onto your page. They're used commonly on eyes. And so we will definitely be using that today. I'm going to set aside some of the glitter glues that I think I may use. Um, I also have very recently purchased these liquid pearls. So we may use this today. Um, and I think that's it. So, and I'll also leave out some of these clear ones because sometimes these clears are what I grab for as well. So we'll take those out. Um, I also want to take out of here for us to take a look at because I think I may use some of these. This is kind of my rando bin of random assorted supplies that I don't use as often. And when I was doing my little tour, these all fell out of the baggie. I'm going to put these in. These are um, metallic pens. Some of these are brush pens. They're like zebra brush pens. I'm going to put another white gel pen in here. Um, and we may use some of these today um, to do some accents on. Um, so we're going to do that. And then I do also have, and I'll show you these are also my Prismacolor Premier pencils. Um, these can be used for shading. Um, I'm going to show you what I did with them. Um, I'm not a huge pencil person. I really try to keep something very, very simple when I'm doing um, shading and things as well. And I'll also show you what I have found works just as well. And if you're not that picky about texture, um, I use typically use either marker or crayons um, for shading. And I have found that I really like that effect too. But I have these Prismacolors. I need to use them. So they're sitting next to me as well. And that's it, I think. Let me move, try and just move some things so that I have some space. I do also have my Cali Art brush markers next to me, as well as the markers that I use to do this page so that I can test some different colors. Here, we're gonna just shift some things around and take a look. So like I said, I've already done some Kind of finishing touches thus far. Um, hold on. Still need to shift and move some things. Move that and that and this. Sorry guys. Okay just so I have some extra space to kind of work and so that you can also see what I'm doing. Um, so I have done some finishing touches already but I want to do a little bit more. So I'll tell you kind of what I did. And the reason I did this off camera was honestly, I just wasn't sure if it was going to work out well. So I wanted to just do this real quick just to make sure that I, I actually liked it. One of the things that I did is I took my Prismacolor Premier, not my Prismacolor Premier, Lauren, Prismacolor colored pencils and did a little bit of shading. So shading, the tip what I do with shading is kind of like the easy shading method, which is I simply go around the outlines, like the bold lines of things and just shade in a slightly darker color than what was here. So I kind of used this kind of army green color to kind of go around um, 
where the cord is all around her body all around the counters and things like that just to create a little bit of a subtle shade that is not something I do very often but it is something that I think creates a nice effect and something I was trying out um so I did just kind of go in small circles around each of the areas it's a little time consuming but I did that I didn't blend it didn't use my blender pencil didn't use anything like that um just simply went around and just shaded a little bit um, I also added some low lights to her hair. So I put down a base color of marker in her hair, um, which I can't remember which one it was, maybe Y, um, Y 400, I believe, which is raw silk. I put that in her hair and then I went through with the brush version of that marker and just went over the lines in her hair to just create a low light effect. I am horrible at hair and skin. And so I wanted to just try it and not have pressure of being on camera while I was doing it. Um, and so I did that. Um, other than that, we're going to go ahead and get started. The first thing that I want to show you is how I use my colorless blender. I learned this um, actually from Emily who told me she uses her colorless blender as the things that are supposed to be like cement, sidewalk, um, stuff like that. And it creates an actual really nice texture. So what I was going to do, this is my colorless blender from my, um, Caliar brush tips is we're actually going to dive in here. I'm going to zoom you guys in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to be going over the bricks, kind of the red part of the bricks. Now, one thing sometimes people ask me too is how do I choose a color palette? Like how do I know what base colors I want to use? I will tell you that um, the fun thing about this Buddy Color with Emily is that we picked each other's color palette. I usually search on Pinterest or search on um, Google for color palettes because that is one of the things that I struggle with the most is trying to put colors together that actually match. And so she actually chose the color palette for me. I chose the color palette for her because she is very much a neutral girl and I am very much not a neutral girl. And um, so we wanted to stretch ourselves. And so I um, um, I got this color palette. I got a really kind of very, very bright, colorful palette for her. And she picked this much more kind of neutral, toned down color palette for me. But I actually really, really like the effect and like how it turned out. The thing about a color palette and the way that you have to do a color palette and, and one thing that I didn't know when I had first started is, is that you want to use a color more than once in your picture. Unless that that's something that one color that you use is something that is so um, meant to be like an accent. Maybe if you're coloring like a room and you want like a couch or a throw pillow or something to really stand out or you're coloring a person and you really want a piece of clothing to kind of be the focal point. Um, if you want that to happen, that's great. But for the most part, you also want to just maintain using the color more than once. So I always try to, when I plan, once I get kind of a color palette, and I try to stick to like six colors or less, um, try to kind of really build off of that. Of course, like in this situation, her skin color is going to kind of be a one-off. I'm not using her skin color somewhere else or things like that. But um, for the most part, most of the colors that are in this image are used in multiple areas. That really helps to tie it all together um, and to bring it some, um, just kind of bring it some, like tie, tie, tie everything together and just make everything look cohesive. So that is what I have found works for me. And I have found that I am much, much, much more pleased with the outcomes of the photos when I do that than when I just try to pick. This book in particular has been a little bit of a sore point for me and I'll, I'll show you guys in a little while. Um, I don't like either of the images that I colored in here. Now, I was very, very new at coloring probably within my first couple of months. I didn't really know how to use alcohol markers that well, and so it's super, super streaky. Um, and I messed up the face um, on both of them. And so I'm just not happy with how they turned out. And so I have to thank Emily because she was the one who actually suggested coloring out of a Hanalyn book for Buddy Color. And I was like, 
Uh, I don't know, but actually now that I've colored in it, I really like how this image turned out. So I'm really hoping to not screw it up with what I'm doing with you guys. I'm going to try to just use some techniques and tools that are simple and not too complicated, like things that I feel like I know that I don't really have to worry about so much. So if you can kind of see, and maybe you can already start to see in comparison from this side to this side, just adding the colorless blender, like how much texture that's really adding to the bricks. Um, just making it look a little bit more like brick. And that's one thing too, when you're doing the finish, like kind of, I consider these like the finishing touches um, to the picture or the embellishments of the picture. What you're really adding is texture and shine and highlight. You're adding shade, you're adding highlights, and you're adding texture. And all of those things help to make the image look less flat because when you use alcohol marker, it just looks kind of one dimensional. And so by adding some of these things, it just makes your picture stand out a little bit more. Also, it's completely unnecessary. <laughs> um, the picture, I would have actually been just fine keeping this image as kind of flat. But like I said, I really started to enjoy adding like embellishments to my pages, adding highlights, kind of zhuzhing it up a little bit as I call it. And um, I find the process really fun. I love things that are like sparkly and shiny and stuff like that. And so I um, um, have really enjoyed this process. So I hope that if maybe you're coloring or maybe you're not, maybe you're just watching me, um, that maybe you can learn a couple of techniques. I also, I really want to know what your techniques are. If there are certain products that you use that really make your images like shine, um, and that you're really happy with that are kind of easy like this, then let me know. Help a girl out. Help a group out. Let us all know. Because um, I have become a better colorist simply by watching and listening to all of you. And I know many of my subscribers are fellow color tubers. So whip out your camera and show yourself finishing a picture because... I'm sure I'm not the only one who's curious about how people finish their pictures. I know Nisi Dollar Diva 99 has been doing a lot of lives kind of featuring different products that she uses. Like she did a whole one on pastels um, and backgrounds, different kind of background products. I think I watched that video twice <laughs> um, because I learned so much from it and different techniques and different products that were out there. And also it's informative because it kind of told me which stuff was easier to work with, which stuff was harder to work with, which stuff you needed water, which stuff you did not. Because there are two things that I hate with some of this, some of this stuff. And one is I hate prepping paper. Um, I don't want to have to, when I want to color, I want to get straight into coloring. I don't want to have to prep my paper and then, um, and then get started. I really kind of want to go ahead and kind of jump into things and, and get going rather quickly. So that is the effect on the brick. I really, really like how that looks. I think that looks amazing. Um, one of the things is too, is I want to use anything on this page first that dries instantly that I don't have to worry about waiting for it to dry. Um, one next thing that I want to do, and I want to look and see specifically how this works. These are the Zebra Brush Pin Metallics. Um, they're okay. I don't use them very often, but I kind of want to do a couple of techniques. I'm looking next at trying to do some of these little fixtures, so these knobs and these handles. I like the base color that's there, but just want to add a little bit of this kind of brassy color. And then also around the mirror, I don't want to do it completely in copper. I was kind of thinking if I could do like a... Um, like just a brush kind of flick to it. I just want to get the feel for this. And I also, you'll see, so these are, this is my color palette that I have here and I have different things tested out on here. Like I use my fine liners to go in and kind of do the little cherries on her top. And so I tested different fine liner colors over the marker just to see how that looked. And so, um, yeah, okay, so let's do this first. 
And you've gotta be careful with some of these products because sometimes they're wet and you don't want wet product. You don't want it to smear. So I'm gonna do these little fixtures here first. So, and also the thing with metallics that I have learned that was kind of the harder lesson to learn was that um, they are very opaque. So they will cover up any black lines. And so that's why a lot of time I use them to accent things rather than to totally color in something because I don't want them to completely um, I don't want them to completely go over a product. Okay. How are we feeling about this? Does that look very metallic? Sorry, I'm just looking really close. I don't know that I'm liking that. Um, let's see. It just doesn't dry very metallic to me. Let's see. These are... I just don't want to use something on the mirror that I'm not happy with. So these are a couple of other metallics that I have. Let's see, is one of these like a bronzy color? Yeah, that one is. That one's definitely bronzy. This I think is like a gold gold. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to use, I just wish I had something kind of in a brush style. Yeah, that just doesn't look very metallic. Um... But you know what? It's like, I don't want to be not cohesive. Yeah, the jelly rolls are definitely much more metallic looking, but I almost want this to look like a little bit like kind of cracked finish. So, um, I'm just going to kind of add these lines down the mirror. What I love about this is that this is like all brush tips, so it's very, very nice. And while that doesn't add a ton of metallic, it definitely adds some interesting texture. These, honestly, I think this is my first time using these. I, I don't know. These are not my favorite. So there, it's just not terribly metallic. Can I go over this with my jelly roll? I can. And that's one thing too. These metallics are very, um, like I said, they're very opaque. And so they can go over things pretty well. So I'm just going to go over that with my jelly roll. I'm going to do the same up here with the mirror and just kind of add some better highlights. Because honestly, that's what you're doing by adding a metallic. You're adding light to a situation. And one thing too, whenever I look at doing like a highlight, whenever I'm adding either white gel pen or I'm adding um, is it a lighter color or metallic or glitter, what you're doing is you're drawing the eye to certain things. So you want to put highlights in areas that you want attention drawn to, and um, you want to really be, I wanna make sure I'm not gonna smear anything. You really wanna make sure that it's Sorry, thinking and talking at the same time is hard. You really want to make sure that it is an area that you want to draw attention to. And you also don't want to overdo it. So I am a person that has a tendency to overdo things sometimes and um, with glitter. And so what you can end up with is literally just a page that just looks like full of glitter. And um, that's not what you want, or at least it's not the effect that I'm going for. I want it to be a little bit more subtle. 
And I also try to add contrast with some of these highlights. So like this mirror is brown, this kind of brick is a brownish color. So I want to add something that's gonna make that mirror stand forward a little bit more. And so by adding kind of just some highlight lines and things like that, it, it adds something a little bit more. Um, I do also add, um, want to add some highlights and stuff by using my Jelly Roll Glaze pen. And we'll use that in a minute. I'm gonna move on to something else because the Jelly Roll Glaze has to dry. So I really don't wanna use that. Um, let's add, so I also wanna add some more highlights, but I also, with my white gel pen, but I also want to add some shade. I like to outline to make your character kind of stand out a little bit too. I wanna add a little bit more shade to her jeans and shade to this, um, to her top and to her um, apron. So let me pull out again my reference sheet with my color palette. And let's look for, let's do the jeans first. So I want to find color airbrush markers. Something that's just a shade darker than this. Ooh, B035 is a good one. Ooh, B234 is a really good one too. 035 and 234. 234 actually looked really good. Let's take a peek at that. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, I prefer to use my brush markers to do this just because I feel like it's a little bit less of a distinct line. It looks a little more, I guess, like artsy per se. It's probably not the right word, but I like just the way that it looks to use a brush marker. So I just, again, go along the lines of where the, um, the dark lines that the illustrator put to just add some shade to the character. Add it to the torn parts of her jeans. Just to add a little bit. A subtle shade into those areas and then just along the hips here. I hope you can see it just adds just a little bit all of these things they add up, but they just add just a little bit of something extra. They add just a little bit of something to the actual character. I do also want to find something for the um, apron. So I used a warm gray for that one. I think I used warm gray three. So let's use warm gray five, warm gray three, warm gray five. Again, I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to just add, kind of go around the lines of the apron. Fill that pocket here. especially want to go around this little knot. Here. Around her waist.
I'm sorry, I am thinking and trying to do this at the same time, so. And just kind of quiet. And as I'm doing this, I'm not sure that I like the effect as much. But again, it's one of those things like you kind of do these things and you learn. There's my husband. It's not horrible, but I'm not, yeah, I'm not like super, super pleased with that. I probably wouldn't have added it to all areas and I'm going to correct some of it by going over it with some white gel pen for some highlights. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and look at her top. Um, <laughs> Um, so let's do maybe 403, what color is this, 301, this is 301, yeah, because everything else is pretty orangey. Yeah, let's do 403. Our 403. 403. I mean, it definitely, I don't, I don't hate it. I just, I don't know that I would have gone all the way over all that. I think that's one thing too. I think we're, we're our own worst critics and I mean, sometimes we have a tendency to be very critical of the work that we do. And ultimately, just like in the other pages where I was kind of, I guess, like I felt embarrassed about the way that those pictures turned out. Um, I look back on those and while well, I still feel like, oh my gosh, what were you thinking a little bit? It's kind of like, you know, I didn't know any better. I was learning. And I think it's so easy in any form of art you maybe compare yourself to what you see on Instagram and compare yourself to other people. And we have to just remember that we're all learning and that ultimately we're going to figure out our own style. We're going to figure out our own techniques and things that we love to do and, and use. And um, there's nothing wrong with that. All right, let's add some silver metallic. I think what I would like to do is I would like to add silver metallic to... Um, some parts um, of this again it's super opaque and so sometimes I find if you color in the whole thing with metallic it just looks messy because it doesn't have some sort of a defined outline so I usually add pieces or parts of metallic into different components of the picture as kind of a highlight rather than trying to completely cover up the object with metallic so let me check the time here because I do have to go get my kids um... Okay, yeah, we've got about 30 more minutes. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to add in some areas of metallic onto like the scissors. I also want to just add some highlights of metallic onto the wand. And onto the curl as well. Just so you can see a little bit of that shine there on some of that. And then I also need to do like her jewelry and I need to do these bottles of, um, bottles of nail polish here. So for her jewelry, I was thinking about doing some gold jewelry Maybe I keep it pretty bronzy. Maybe I do that same color that I did. Hmm. Let's 
do I have? I have other metallic colors. What about? There's purple, blue, green, red. What does this red metallic look like? <laughs> There's this cat that's outside that um, thinks she belongs to us. It's kind of funny. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do... Let's do the, let's do the gold metallic. So I am just for her earrings and for her necklace. Do a gold metallic. And get this earring here. And this is nice because Hannah actually uses some pretty like bold lines. So um, it doesn't cover up the whole thing. Next, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and add in some, I want to think about some jelly roll glaze. Um, and I want to think about some white gel pen accents and some glitter. So kind of what I was thinking was adding in a little bit of glaze like to these black tops of these cans to just give them some texture and either going through and using this yellow jelly roll glaze on the um, little emblems here. I think I might like that because the actual yellow when I swatch it looks pretty bold. So that's what we're gonna do. So the glazes take a long time. Um, so what I want to do first is I do think I want to add some, this is the Jelly Roll Stardust, adds that to some of the, um, some of the nail polishes here and then go through with the white, with the clear Stardust and I mean clear glaze and go through some of the other nail polish stuff. But I'm going to add, let's go ahead and add in my white gel pen accent details because I feel like those... Um, need to go next because while I will tell you this gel pen does take some time to dry um, but it's not as bad as the glaze like the glaze takes a freakishly long time to dry oh I also thought about doing the stickles hmm you know what no I don't think I think this one is so simple I don't think I want to use stickles. Um, now for the highlights, there's no real rhyme or reason. I do try to kind of just go in natural areas where maybe you want a little more light to come through. Um, but there's not really necessarily a, a right or wrong way to go about doing this. Um, oh, I did want to do it kind of along the jeans. You know, there's like those white strings that kind of come along on jeans when your jeans are torn and ripped. So I wanted to put kind of some lines through her jeans. There. I kind of go... Usually what I see people do is they'll go along the body of the person, down the sides. Um, just to add a little bit more definition to an area. Um, don't want to add too much up here. Uh, but I do want to add a little bit to as well to um, thought about adding a little bit to some of these bricks kind of just some random highlights on some of them
and just add a little bit more texture to the background. Yeah, I like that effect. So usually I'm never terribly disappointed in using gel pen. I think I have overdone it once. <coughs> but for the most part, I'm usually very happy with, I always feel like I should use white gel pen more and do more highlights. It really, really does add something to a picture. Um, it kind of helps to balance it out and not make it so stagnant. Um, and just add some fun additional texture. Mm Let's do that there. I think that adds a little bit more to it. Um, what do you guys think? I like it. I am not touching her skin because I'm afraid of it. <laughs> um, the only other thing too, I've thought also about using Jelly Roll Glaze on her mouth and doing kind of a glossy lip, but that's gonna be way, way, way too light, the red Jelly Roll Glaze. So we're not gonna do that. Um, let's think about what I want to do next. I definitely want to do something with these nail polishes. I definitely want to do something over here. Now these yellow stickles though are so pretty and those could be really, really cute on these or they could look real funky and totally out of place. <laughs> um, you know what? Let's, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hold back. I'm going to hold back. Um, you know, I could also use the stickles over here. What does the stickles look like? Let's see. if the stickles comes out. This one is not wanting to cooperate. Hmm. Hmm. Um, that one is maybe a little bit clogged. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to figure that one out. So that one's definitely not gonna work. How about the use of this one? The liquid pearls. I'm still like thinking about that mirror and what I wanna do. Um, okay, I have this other stickles, this one here, and that could be pretty around the mirror. Let's see if this one works. This one definitely does. That's really pretty. Um, let's think about that. Let's think about that. This yellow stickles is also really pretty. Yeah, that's kind of like that iridescent yellow color. That is really gorgeous. Um, I really wish this one worked because I think this one is going to be the one that I really want to do. Do I have like a little pen or something to kind of help with this guy? Because it is like super, super clogged. Um, I don't know that I have like a needle or anything that I can use or like a safety pen or something. Um, so we're going to have to just say no to that. Hmm. Okay. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and add some black glossy accents or black glossy stuff. I'm trying to look at these stickles and decide what I want to do. I still feel like I want to do something more with that mirror. And I still really feel like I want to use this but I need something to help with it. Okay, I'll have to go figure that out in a minute. 
Um, let's go ahead and add some glossy accents. Not glossy accents. These are like uh, jelly roll glaze. Like I said, with the glaze, you just have to really be careful because it is very, 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 um, it does take a minute to dry. It takes more than a minute to dry, actually. Okay, we're gonna use that. And we are going to use the, we are going to use the, um, what am I trying to do? Do I want to use the stickles? Those are so pretty. I'm going to use the stickles on these. Okay. Very carefully. <laughs> so pretty. I love this pack of stickles. I got these off of Amazon and they're like this like just beautiful iridescent color. Oh yes. I love that. Love, 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 love. Okay. That's gorgeous. And then I definitely want to add some glitter to some of these nail polish bottles. Now I could, if I really wanted to add some of these but that's a little crazy that's a little crazy we're gonna go with the stardust and I'm going to add some glitter to some of these nail polishes so we're gonna have this like glitter polish here and we'll do this one as a glitter and this one here this one here, this one here, and this one here. Just add some glitter to some of those. And for the ones that are not glitter, we're going to add a little bit of this clear jelly roll glaze to them. And just see how that gives just such fun texture. Like I said, a lot of just zhuzhing up a picture is just adding just simply some texture. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I will be right back. I am going to go try and to unclog this stickles. Uh, pause. Okay. We are back in business. I actually, I put a needle through there but then actually the hole on the very end of this one was just not working so I had to actually just cut a larger hole so that's what ended up being the issue okay before we do that I'm gonna do her eyes and the reason being is because I want to work my way from the inside out and so I want to do the mirror very last I don't want to have to be kind of like worried about reaching um I did touch these stickles just a little bit and with my hand as I was messing with stuff just fix that with a little needle there okay so glossy accents so these I use for the eyes and it kind of gives this just again almost this kind of like shimmery or this kind of wet look like you can see with the jelly roll glaze here but the glossy accents I feel like do a little bit of a better job um, with creating that wet look so I'm gonna go ahead and just put this on her eyes now I am not the best with glossy accents like yeah like that poured out like a ton 
And so you really want to work very, very quickly and not use your applicator very much with it because you don't want lines in it. Once it starts drying, and this actually starts to dry kind of quickly, um, you don't want to have little smears or smudges. So I'm not the best at the technique at trying to get it exact. Okay, lots of the glossy accents. So it almost looks like on these, I've only ever used this before with, um, Um, I've only ever used this before on my Chibi Girls. Um, I've never used it with Hannah Lynn before. She almost looks like she's crying <laughs> because of how big her eyes are. But yeah, it just gives that kind of like just a very, very wet look to her eyes. So, and that'll dry clear and um, that gives a really, really nice effect. So yeah, we are almost done guys. So I'm gonna go around this mirror and um, just kind of go over those lines with some of the, some of this. Just because I'm not terribly happy with the mirror, but I feel like this just adds a something a little bit extra and fun. Ooh, I like that. It kind of looks like a bronzy disco ball. And I've also seen people like in mermaid pictures and stuff add these to like their hair. Oh my gosh, and that just looks amazing. And there's like these streaks of just really beautiful color in their hair. Lander just makes some really good products. Okay, so that is that. So what I have to do now is just let this sucker dry and just give her a moment to do her and to dry and then she will be complete. So I hope maybe you've learned something. I definitely have learned some additional things from this picture and I'm just really, really pleased with how it turned out. Um, I really, really like just the accents. I feel like it just amps it up a level. It just makes it look that much better and more refined. And um, yeah, so let me know if you liked this. If you do, I will do more kind of completed or finished pages with you just to give you some kind of different and fun content. And um, with that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.